Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Now, uh, officially open the meeting. Ms. Thompson, you have the honor. I do. Everybody, if you will, just bow your head for a second. I'm going to ask the location. Heavenly Father, I'm so glad to be here, and I'm so glad everyone else is here, too. This is a free country, and you have the right to freedom of speech. May we never forget that. Be with us. Put your hands on this meeting tonight, Lord, that we will have patience and calm and discernment and strong leadership to always do the right thing, your right thing. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next up is approval of the agenda, and Mr. Turner, I think you have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the agenda with the exception of adding the ABSS presentation to prior to uh, item 6A. I'll second. All right, his motion is that we put the ABSS on as a, an agenda item uh, and it be prior to 6A, cool. 6A is the adoption of the budget. So we're allowing the school system, if this is passed, uh, to um, make a presentation as an agenda item, not a timed item. Right. Okay, do we have a second? We I just did. pay them down. Right. And motion second, any comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, so 6A is now ABSS. <clears throat> now, do we have a vote on approving the agenda subject to adding ABSS? Motion to approve. A second. Uh, Mr. Lashley seconds. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we're now down to public comments. And there are 12 speakers. Uh, Jim Etheridge. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? Commissioners and members of the audience. I'm sorry, I, before your time, so give your name and address, and if you're an Alamos County resident. Okay. I am Jim Etheridge and reside north of Elon. Thank you. I come to talk tonight about an issue regarding four entities, perhaps five, municipalities, older communities such as the Cable Road community developed in the 1960s under different zoning ordinances, developers and you, the commissioners, and NC Stack. St state statute 160D, extraterritorial jurisdiction known as ETJs. ETJs have a unique feature that allows municipalities, zoning authority, and county governed areas, though property owners are not their constituents. Property owners pay taxes to the county, not the municipality, and our county constituents are represented by you. Currently, there are 10 manip municipalities and approximately 8,600 property owners under ETJ authority. You as a governing body had delegated much of your zoning authority to these entities as provided under Statute 160D. I believe the statute provides for this body to still govern and oversee zoning needs as they arise. Developers are, as an entity, impacted by ETJs. They own property and seek to develop it. Municipalities and developers work closely together to implement zoning requirements for the benefit of the municipality, the, the developer, and county. Look at the Cable Road community and the documents you were handled. It has existed for over 50 years, provided its own roads until NCDOT took over, maintains water and sewer, pays for other county services. There is currently no curb and guttering, sidewalks, park, greenway, street lights, etc. Streets are where children play, neighbors congregate, where they, we walk, and where some university students and athletes walk, run, and train. 
These are places where part of our happiness and safety provided for under the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution occur. Look at the new development. There are 129 new residences. A road from it will intersect Cable Road, which is substandard by today's zoning requirements. Traffic volume will increase significantly in the older community, impacting safety and daily activities. Two school buses have difficulty passing each other on Cable Road today. The new areas will have significantly improved services, water, sewer, cub, curb, guttering, parks, greenways, sidewalks, streetlight, roadways provided by the developer, plus services such as police and fire protection provided by the municipality, all in line with new zoning requirements. Their integrity, happiness, and safety are cared for while ours is sacrificed. This community has been to four meetings regarding this development. Town leaders told us at the last meeting they were following state zoning regulations and restrictions. The developer was complying with current requirements. The community need to get over it. It's opposition because the current zoning laws provided for development much more impactful than proposed by this developer. Thus, I and others in this community ask you, the commissioners, to find an equitable and more reasonable solution for integration of these older communities into municipalities where they have some skin in the game. Perhaps municipalities need to make fair and reasonable accommodations for these and other items included in a reasonable time frame at a reasonable cost to these property owners. I ask you to represent us, the underrepresented in municipalities on these issues, and consider how these needs can be met. Perhaps a county unified zoning plan is one way to achieve the representation and support we need. Thank you. I gave you 15 seconds actually because I cut you off at the first. So you got a full three minutes that way. Thank you. Yeah, Ebriola. I'm Ed Priola. I live in Mebane at 747 South 8th Street. Good evening, Commissioners. It's great to be here on June 16th celebrating freedom. In the interest of transparency, kindly let me note, uh, let me note for the audience that I'm a candidate for the Alamance County Board of Commissioners. Now straight to the point. As a long-term taxpayer advocate, I once again urge this board to pass a revenue neutral tax rate. Uh, when people are threatened by crushing inflation, eviction from their homes, it's not time to raise taxes. Your leadership on taxing and spending is essential, not only at the county level, but to keep the spending bloat at mu of municipal politicians uh, and bureaucrats in check. I urge the board to set an example by holding the line on taxes today and moving forward to establish a more programmatic approach to reducing spending. Mayor Talley of Graham and her city council uh, recently set the right example by holding the line on tax increases. She and the council there are to be commended. On the other side, in stark contrast, the majority of politicians in Mebbin and Burlington adopted a let the taxpayers eat cake mentality. Their priorities are building more pickleball courts and swimming pools. This is an opportunity to reject the let the taxpayers eat cake mindset and pass a revenue tax at neutral budget. Thank you for your time. And thank you. Again. Dan Engel, you're new to this thing, aren't you? <laughs> uh, what did I tell folks? I didn't just ride in the town on the mule yesterday. <laughs> Which one of these seats did you have, Dan? Well, I, I kept. I had that one for five and a half That's years. I, and I had that one for about eighteen months. So, uh, <laughs> I'll sit as chair and vice chair. And uh, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you for allowing me to speak, and the board members, thank you. I really appreciate it. As I come to you tonight, I just want to uh, talk about our working relationship. We have a great one. Uh, thanks to Ms. Pam Thompson and myself years ago, we came up with the liaison deal uh, for the school system. And uh, 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 Mr. Turner and Mr. Lashley, thank you all for being at the meetings. We appreciate it. I think it's, we've made great strides in our communication, and I want to continue in that endeavor. I really do. I mean that from my heart. And thank you. I know you're at just about every meeting, and I appreciate you being there. Uh, you know, when you when you look at uh, when you, when you look at our county, 
There's a lot going on. We're having growing pains right now, folks. You see houses and apartments going up everywhere. Uh, and with that comes a lot of responsibility. You know, when you look at the cost uh, of uh, just the things around the county, residential is the worst thing in the world in, in, in terms of paying taxes because of the service that are associated with it, uh, whether it be the school system or, or whether it be uh, public safety, it costs uh, as opposed to business and also, uh, also farming land. So, uh, you know, instead of getting ahead, what, what do we do? We kind of, you know, spin our wheels. Listen, you guys, I appreciate every one of you. I know what you're going through right now. I've been there and the stress associated with it. But looking at, looking at that, uh, unfortunately, you know, when we passed the, when, when we passed the bonds, the two bonds, the only problem that we had, we didn't pass the third one. And if we had passed a quarter cent sales tax, folks, we wouldn't be, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you right now talking to you. Davidson County did it years ago and they were able to build a new school and they raised a, a big portion of the money from the quarter cent sales tax that they had. So we came as close as we, as we ever had uh, three times. Maybe we need to look at that again and all of us get involved and get this thing passed. But you're doing a great job. I know you've got tough decisions. Whatever you can do to help us, I'm going to just say this. I would certainly appreciate it. I'm not going to take a lot of time because I know there's a lot of folks want to speak tonight. But I do appreciate you, and I understand. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it Chris Crane? Yes, sir. Looks like. Yes. Okay, yes, sir. You're next. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good it's becoming a regular thing, seems like. <laughs> My name is Chris Crane. I'm a captain of the Alamance County Sheriff's Office. I've been a resident of Alamance County since uh, 1997, and I live in the uh, uh, Boywood section of Alamance County. I'd like to talk to you tonight uh, as a concerned citizen and employee of Alamance County. The important decision that you're going to make tonight would only uh, impact the present stakeholders of Alamance County, but those individuals that may decide to make Alamance County their home in the future. One thing I'd like to point out, since January of 2022, the Alamance County Sheriff's Office has experienced a total of 30 employee resignations. During exit interviews with these individuals, several things came to light. They were able to transfer to other law enforcement agencies who have more attractive compensation packages. Their benefits were better, period. One officer departed and went to another agency with a lower starting salary, but because of the price of our insurance, they actually receive, they have more money in their pocket every payday. That's something that needs to be looked at. We've lost several lateral entry candidates to surrounding agencies for much the same reason, more, employ more attractive employee benefits. Others are opting to depart from law enforcement profession altogether for various reasons. The perceived lack of public support for law enforcement tops the list. As many current officers, myself included, have witnessed others in the profession being sacrificed on the altar of public convenience to prop up a political agenda. We do not feel supported. They leave, we attempt to replace the best we can. We currently have 60 positions open. It'll cost us $200,000 to fill those positions and outfit those officers. I'm sure that money could be used better in other places. The training division, personnel division, Alamance County Sheriff's Office has experienced an increasing challenge in selecting and onboarding the right personnel to fulfill our mission. This problem needs to be addressed by you, the elected members of the Alamance County Board of Commissioners. We at the Alamance County Sheriff's Office will always endeavor to provide the best law enforcement services to the citizens of Alamance County. Without the proper funding and better benefits, this will become an increasingly more difficult task to accomplish. We need your help. Since 2017, the county has experienced an 8% increase in population and a 23% increase in new homes. With this increase in population and infrastructure comes the inevitable strain on public services. Law enforcement, emergency services, social services, and the school board, I'm sorry, the school system are now more than ever being forced to do more with a whole lot less. Now, commissioners, is not the time to go cheap because, as they say, cheap gets expensive in the long run. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Chris. Henry Vines. You've never appeared before us either, have you? <laughs> Those in radio land or whatever, camera land, uh, both the previous chair of this board and so forth and Henry have been here many, many times. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Henry Vines and I live at 3450 Isaac Drive. Commissioners, I come to you tonight as just uh, 
got some concerns. I listened to the radio station this morning, and uh, as Mr. Engel alluded to, uh, the bond that was on uh, in 2019, we, the citizens of this county, approved the county to spend $150 million in a bond, and it was approved. We also pushed very hard, myself included, to try and get the sales tax to fund this, and it failed. So, evidently, you know, it comes back. If you want it, you've got to pay for it. And that led to a property tax increase. At that time, when this was introduced, this eight cent that was approved, Commissioner Carter was the only one of y'all that was on that board at the time. It only passed three to two because two commissioners said that this was just too much that was being asked for. And we didn't even have a bill at the time. And we paid, and I say we, the citizens of this county paid that eight cent for the last four years and have created a lot of money that's went into these various funds, ABS, ACC, and the county. When this was figured back in 2019, a penny was only worth $1.2 million, which comes to about $6.78 million. At that time, that wasn't even enough really to pay the bond because of the projected amount of money that was going to be. It was concerns. I sat there and spoke out against this. How in the world are we going to do this? Well, ABS uh, agreed to allow some of their lottery monies to go in to pay this. But as time went on, even with the projections that the county manager had made at the time, in seven years it'd be worth $8.5 million, well, no one realized and understood that what was going to happen. Now, with the reval, we're looking at an amount of $14 million, $14.1 million of revenue that could come in off of the 5.65 cent that's appropriated to ABSS. That's not what this is ever intended to be a funding source. It was to pay the bond and the debt and was supposed to help reduce that amount of money that we would have to borrow on that bond. But that hasn't happened. All that's happened is every time some money gets in there, it gets spent. I ask you to keep the revenue neutral in place and do what we need to do to make that happen. Thank you, Thank sir. you. Thank you. Ryan Bowden. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to recognize a couple of my school board colleagues, Ms. Uh, Donna Westbrook, Chuck Marsh, and some, uh, of course, Dan Engel. And then you have Superintendent Dan Butler, um, Royal Rogers, Deputy Superintendent, Les Ackman's our public information officer. And we thank you. And Ms. Graves is not here. That's unusual. Ms. Graves she is normally, under the weather. Yes, sir, you're correct. She's normally always here. Yeah. Good evening. Ryan Bowden, Vice Chairman, ABSS Board of Education. Recently, ABSS made a difficult decision to cut $7 million from our central services budget with the intention of prioritizing the needs within our district. These priorities were clearly expressed. Our goal was simple, safety of our student athletes and to ensure we have the resources to attract and retain talented educators and coaches across this district. However, despite our efforts, we find ourselves once again facing a burden of further cuts imposed by you. Please understand something. I'm not here asking for a handout or more money, as some may think. I'm here requesting that ABSS be properly funded in a safe and reasonable manner. You are proposing a budget for ABSS that doesn't even reflect the current inflation. Currently, with three leaking roofs across our district, these cuts will be putting us in a very challenging situation. Throughout this year, this board and superintendent have been fully transparent with our plans about finances. Transparency is the key and our approach will not change. 
We have made considerable cuts within central services, opting not to hire replacements and redistributing those responsibilities. Let me be very clear, making additional reductions and especially not funding the continuation budget will jeopardize the quality of education our children receive. It's disheartening to know that decisions impacting the futures of thousands of students are being made based on the preferences of a select few. Commissioners, we can put lipstick on the pig however we like to. You can call it reallocation, reassign, resizing, or whatever other fancy name you want to come up with, but at the end of the day, money is being taken away from the school system. Commissioners, it's past time we start valuing education in this county. And while I'm standing here, it's past time we start valuing public safety and all of our employees of this county. We should be striving to make this county a bedrock not a stepping stone. Commissioners, I respectfully ask that you give ABSS a budget that is safe and reasonable. Heck, just give us a budget that reflects current inflation and we'll take care of the rest. Thank you all. And thank you, sir. Ann Jones. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ann Jones. I live at 605 Washington Street in Graham, North Carolina. Last month I was here before you, um, distinguished gentlemen and distinguished ladies, um, to speak about the budget, um, the surplus for our um, school students. And I would like to thank your efforts because I ask you not to put it forth to a new courthouse, and you did not do that. Thank you. So I appreciate that part, but we still have something that's very important and that that money was allocated to be spent on our school children, um, on our school board, on our school systems, and we really need it. I have two grandchildren that are in the school system that attend EM Holt, and they have uh, teachers that make them books. They make little books for them to read and bring home. Not books from the library, but that teacher takes time to make those books for every one of the students in her class. So they know how to read. So they have addition uh, worksheets that they print out and send home. And I'm so proud of them and everything that they've accomplished. But I ask you to step back a minute and remember that you had a favorite teacher or a teacher that inspired you in some way. I did. My teacher was Mrs. Wright from Broadview Middle School. And um, she was, she always wore her hair back in a bun, a dress, high heels, but she carried around this yardstick and she would pound the table to let you know to pay attention. She wanted us to have fun, but she also wanted us to have discipline in our studies so that we understood stuff. And we, each one of us were her children. So if we had something in intramural games that was going on and she didn't agree with the coach, she would take off her high heels and make a stance to that coach or any other teacher or a principal to stand up for her children in her classroom. So I'm sure if you look back in the four corners of your mind, you can unfurl the same type of teacher that you admired and looked forward. And those children that are in that school are going to become your replacements. They're going to replace a sheriff. They're going to replace our mayor. So I'm asking you to please keep those funds in our school system and, and be the leaders that we think that you are. We put you in office for a reason. So please make sure that these kids have what they need and don't just slide past them. And I'm willing to take that stance today and I'm willing in honor of Mrs. Wright to take off my high heels <laughs> and tell you to leave that money where it needs to be in our school system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ebony Penix. Hello. Um, my name is Ebony Penix. I'm in Green Level, um, Alamance County, of course. Um, I'm here as a concerned parent. I have two small children. Um, in the beginning of the school year, last year, one child went to um, Pleasant Grove and the other child went to South Melbourne because of construction. Um, it was really difficult for my kids. Uh, my son, he went when he started school, he started during COVID, so kindergarten was on the computer screen. 
and my daughter, she had been in school before, so it was a little easier for her, but when they split them up and the buses were split up, my son actually would go to sleep on the bus sometime, and the bus driver would have to come back around <laughs> and bring my son back home. So um, my, co my concern is basically um, when we vote on something, because I remember in 2020, I think it, we voted on some school monies, and when we vote on, vote on something, I want to know that it's going to stay there. I don't want to have to worry about it being moved and Honestly, I didn't know anything about any money um, being reallocated, um, and I may not know in the future because I'm busy being a mom. I don't always have time to keep up with this type of stuff, but I would like to know that if we're told that money is going to be doing one thing, I would like for it to do that. Um, I would like to be able to trust you guys and know that when you say it's going to be here, it's going to stay there, especially if I put my vote on it and my vote is supposed to count. And I want everybody to know their vote count. So in order for them to know that the it, it has to be, we got to be able to trust you guys. So I just, I, I want to make sure my kids get a good education. And when there's money set aside for that, I just would like for it to stay. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tiffany Smith. You guys all grouped together. <laughs> good evening. My name is Tiffany Smith, and I live on Tangle Ridge Trail in Alamance County. I'm here to express my desire for the county commissioners to find the money somewhere else. I spoke at the June 5th meeting. I felt that you all were listening, yet I'm not sure you heard me, so let me reiterate. I have three children that attend the Alamance Burlington School System, a rising junior, a rising second grader, and a rising first grader. Every child and educator deserves to walk into a school building with adequate HVAC systems, supplies, and buildings that have been maintained. That has not been the case for my children. My rising junior has asthma, and on many occasions pleaded with his teacher to at least bring a fan into the classroom. The request was denied, and the teacher only offered to open a window. Why are we only providing open windows that circulate hot air and allow pollen to enter the building? It is 2023, not the 1800s. Right now, our schools already have a list of $17 million in necessary repairs, $7.5 million in reductions and eliminations to programs and positions that the Board of Education needs to cut by 2024 to afford priority items. How are we funding anything other than education at this point? I understand your desire for revenue neutral budget, yet I don't agree that the children should sacrifice basic needs for you to obtain that. The funds you want to utilize belong to the children. In closing, I would like to say, hands off our reserve fund, hands off our debt service fund, hands off any fund that threatens our children's education, find the money somewhere else. Thank you for your time. And we thank you. Bryant Chris. I hope you play some kind of sports at some point in your lifetime. Absolutely. <laughs> With your life. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Brian Crisp. I am a resident of Gibsonville, North Carolina. Speaking to you tonight as a, res as a resident of this county, as a proud ABSS graduate of Cummings High School, as an elected official in this county, and as a father who currently has children in the school system. I also have one son who graduated in 2020. I'm here to thank you for hearing our demands to not use the debt service funds for renovating the courthouse. However, I would like to add that we would also like each commissioner to go on record and say these funds will not be taken later or at any other time for any purpose other than education. I work as an organizer, which means my day-to-day -day job is to talk to people in the community and find out what their problems are, help them organize, enable them to fix the issue. We canvassed this entire county starting last summer up until now, and we heard three major themes, education, health care, and housing. And after we did our analysis, we determined that education was the largest issue our county was concerned about. It was about 60, 66% of the responses. I can personally attest to seeing a lot of the problems facing this school system. At my children's school, a lot of classes don't have books or materials. One of my son's classes was in a trailer that is falling apart. 
It's hot in the spring and summer and cold in the winter. My other kids' classes have books, but they're not allowed to take them home. So as a parent, how do I help my child do their homework? Other schools have leaky roofs, dangerous stairs, HVAC not working, unusable athletic fields, many other issues. We can't ask why our kids are in the streets when they aren't provided with what's necessary to keep them out of the streets. I have friends who are teachers who spend a good percentage of the below average wage that they earn to make up the shortfall they have in their classrooms. They do it because they care, but this is nothing new. We all know that ABSS has been failing our children for many years, and it's a slap in the face to the teachers that work hard every day and pour their souls into their profession that we can't, or should I say won't, fully fund our schools. Children do the best they can with the limited resources and help they receive. I watched the June 13th work session, and there are many services and programs mentioned as being necessary. And it's true, programs like Family Justice Center, JCPC Crossroads, Social Workers with DSS, I had an aunt who worked there. All these programs are necessary, and law enforcement is necessary. But maybe if we fully invest in our children, we won't need these programs on such a large scale. Show me your budget, and I'll show you what your priorities are. Thousands have been spent to protect a monument a few feet from here better than we protect our children and their educations. This county's priority should be our children. It will go a long way to fixing a lot of, a lot of the problems faced in this county. We don't need bigger jails or more officers. We need more school funding, more books, and more investment in our children. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Tamika Harvey. Good evening. Did My name I is pronounce your name correctly? <coughs> yes, you did. You, you pronounced it correctly. My name is Tamiko Harvey. Um, I live at 733 Grover Lane. I am a resident of Burlington um, and Alamance County. Good evening, County Commissioners. Today we're here again, not asking, but demanding that you do not touch the reserve funds. Maybe you read or didn't read that school breakfast and lunch prices would be increasing the next school year due to the labor costs or the labor increase and the increase of food prices. Now, when you read an article like that, it's no way we should be in here asking you not to touch the reserve funds because it shouldn't even be a question. How is it that we continue to take away from our students and still expect them to excel? We can't even pay school workers enough money without it affecting our kids. The question you should ask yourself is, do we really care about what would happen by taking this money away from the school's reserve funds? What would it really do to our schools? Demand is that the demand is that you don't touch the reserve funds. Keep a revenue neutral budget. Hands off reserve funds. <coughs> hands off debt service funds. Hands off all funds that threaten education in Alamance County. Thank you so much. We thank you. Uh, Mary Joyce. I kept looking for you. I, hey, I man, you were hiding nice. behind the podium. <laughs> I look like a golfer, not a not a speaker. Uh, you know, I was just sitting here listening to all this, and you know, you you got a way to fund all this. You got a way to fund everything that I've heard asked for here tonight, and I can't believe you don't see it. You don't see it, and you should see it of all people. I'm gonna give you a couple examples in your reevaluation. Lowe's <coughs> Home Improvement Center. At the last valuation, not the one you just did, was valued at $6.2 million. Okay? Which is way too low for Lowe's. Way too low. I'd buy it right now. Follow if I'll give them a check. But then when you reevaluation, you value it at 6.8. You know what that does? They paid $41,000 in property tax last year. You know what they're going to pay in the new year? Your new revenue neutral rate? They're going to get a discount of $11,000. Their property taxes are going down. Why is that? Why is that happening? You think this evaluation you did is a piece of crap? It's a piece of junk. 
I've talked to business people all over this town. Their prices didn't go up. That's why you don't have a bunch of business people in these appealing. You don't have farmers appealing, do you? You don't have them coming in here, do you? You know, Henry, I heard you say it the other night. You like keep it revenue neutral. Well, I bet you would. <laughs> I bet you would. Because you're going to get a tax decrease of 10 or 11 cents. Isn't that right? 20 cents. There you go, bud. That's, uh, that's right. That's exactly right. You only have to make $1,000 sell one pig a year to declare your property a farm. One pig. But you can own 800 acres? Come on, guys. Your head's in the sand. You're taxing the homeowners to make up the discounts for the farmers and the business. When you can tax the people, everybody, every category that you got, you could have raised the valuation 50%, left your rate at 43 cent revenue neutral, and nobody would have had a tax increase. Not one person, not one house, not one business, not one farm. But you know what? And people would have been happy. And then they wouldn't feel so bad about you saying, well, can we need an extra three or four cent to meet the sheriff's department needs, to meet the education needs? They can live with that. But you didn't do that. There's no way that you can sit here and tell me that that Lowe's, a, a billion-dollar billion company, should get a, that's made a killing off this pandemic, should get $11,000 or 25 or 30% discount in their property taxes? How is that? Who, who did these commercial uh, rates? Obviously, nobody that knew anything about commercial appraisal. Thank you, Mr. Okay? Thank you. And I'd like you to continue this budget until you get this investigated. Because it's wrong. If these are all the public speakers, um, we now go to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next item is the ABSS and Dr. Butler. Oh, let me make one, one announcement. We do have, at the end of this meeting, county commissioners can and may likely respond to your comments. So I would encourage you not to rush out. Uh, so hang on and, and see what happens, but allow the county commissioners to respond at the end of our agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paisley. Um, I don't think anyone will outdo uh, Barry Joyce after that. Uh, speech. So I'll uh, try my best, though. Uh, I appreciate a few minutes of your time uh, on the agenda, not public comment. Um, I'm asking for you guys to reconsider an allocation of our continuation budget of $867,930. I'm appreciative of what you guys have done for us. I think you're well aware that my administration is new. Uh, I'm just finishing up year one, and most of my board members are pretty new as well. Uh, I inherited a fund balance of about $2.9 million, which is very unhealthy. And what I didn't know at the time was that more was going to come out of it because of contractual obligations made by previous administration. I've made $7.5 million worth of cuts since I've been in my office. There's not much more to cut except for people and specialty programs such as art and music, and we don't want to go there. And I certainly don't want to send people to the house with no job. That's not going to help our economy right now. My Board of Education also had some priorities as well, such as athletic trainers, increase of teaching supplements, and coaching supplements, who have never had a raise since I can recall. We were once in the top 10. Mr. Turner and I have had a conversation about that, trying to get back in the top 10. I think we're 13th in, in the state right now in teacher supplements, which doesn't sound too bad, but when you're in the middle of Orange and Guilford and Wake nearby in Winston-Salem, we have to be very competitive. So the 1% increase is very valuable to our teachers right now, and that is in the budget. And if you'll remember, 
back in January when we met, that was, that was some, some items that Ms. York and I talked about that potentially you guys could help us with. And Ms. York has said time and time again that your obligation is capital, and I do respect that. And I took that to heart, so I found the money to find the 1% increase for teachers, the coaching supplement increase, and also the athletic trainers. All of that together is about $1.9 million. I don't want to have to go back on my word and, and cut that. And I won't have to if you can help me in ABSS with 867930. That will fund our continuation budget, which includes things such as this. Charter school increases. An additional SRO at our new high school, at Southeast High School. A custodial contract at Southeast High School. And a classified step increase. So that all of our employees know that they're valuable to us. Those things cost money. And that continuation budget must be in place for all those things to happen. So really what I'm saying is this. <coughs> I can cut the athletic trainers and teaching supplements and coaching pay increases. I could do a riff and send some people home. Or I could stand here and ask you for 867930. So I'll be glad to try to answer any questions. And I will start, I will say before you answer, answer ask any questions, we're by no means perfect. Have there been some spending in the past that shouldn't have been done at ABSS? I think so. I cut $7 million. Remember, I was with ABSS for 17 years before I went away to be a superintendent. I know. But don't blame me and my current administration for things that have been done wrongly in the past. Thank you. Yes, sir. We will start. Questions? I'm okay. You want to start? Uh, I'm okay. Mr. Carr. I've got a question. I, we discussed in the budgeting process funding the SRO for the new high school. It's in our budget. So that's already in our budget Correct. to fund to the ABSS. According to my finance officer, that is a line item that's not been funded. A, a new, S, a well, new let's, SRO. Let's clarify that. Okay. Has it been funded? Yes, we funded it as part of our current expense allocation. So it's a contract that we have with ABSS for that position. Correct. Okay. I will have to disagree based on my information in front of me, but you're the boss right now, so okay. Well, Let's keep moving. <laughs> they're the boss when it comes to the finances, but uh, but it, it I have seen the budget, mm -hmm. and it has been funded. Okay. We are the, according to Fox National News several months ago, we were the only county in the entire United States to have SROs in every single school. I don't know if that's still it's current not true. or not. It's not true. And I'm yeah, not I, wish it, I wish it were true for us, but it's not true. I, I'm not disputing yeah. what you're saying at all. I'm just saying that was on national news. Yeah. Uh, and we do have an SRO in every single <coughs> school. To my knowledge, our budget is not showing that, but you're saying there's a contract in play right. with an additional SRO with cost of living at Southeast. Apparently, there's a contract that we have where we get reimbursed for the expenses from ABSS and perhaps... Through the grant. Okay. But that's I'm not, not sure guaranteed. how you fund it on your the, side. Yeah, that's not guaranteed. So I will stick with, to uh, my numbers for now uh, when I'm asking for 867930. Um, in our earlier conversation, you were explaining how you got to this point because back on May the 22nd, you proposed or presented 7,600,000 in cuts. And let me tell you, Dr. Butler. From a $46.8 million, $46 million budget to cut 16% going forward from what you have described as excess in your budget is a wonderful thing for the citizens of Alamance County. And you have had our support. I, can, I feel fairly confident that you've had our support all the way as you come in trying to do your job here. That's amazing, 16% in savings for the citizens of Alamance County. Um, on that vote, you proposed to use those savings, or your finance, your mm -hmm. 
unless I believe it was proposed in a video I was watching, to use the 7.6 million in savings to fund the eight points of 867,000. Right. And the 1,995, which totals to 2 million out of here someplace. Um, Are you looking at our slides? Right. The, um, Two million eight hundred thousand. Two point eight, roughly two point nine million, and put four point mm -hmm. seven million, four point seven million in our fund savings. Funds. Yeah. Now that the problem that you've encountered, from what I understand, mm -hmm. is that there has been a significant shift, and you might want to explain to the rest of the board how what has happened here, but in a significant shift in what is in your fund balance. I know that your auditors recommend an 8% fund balance, I believe you said. Somewhere between 5 and 10%. Right. As of today, we're at $1.2 million. The state and the county don't require it. Correct. The county maintains a fund balance. The county maintains a fund balance for all of the county. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available for us to use for single expenses, not, not budgetary expenses. Mm -hmm. They're going to be ongoing, but single expenses on an annual basis. For the whole county, Sheriff's Department, if they need something, ABSS, uh, DSS, Health Department, whatever. I applaud taking excess funds out of your operations and building a fund balance for the school system. That's a good idea. It's not required. So just getting to where we are mm -hmm. in the discussions. So. The fact that your fund balance has wavered by about $2 million, apparently, and is going to put you in a position of having less than, I think you said less than a million dollars in your fund balance? One point two. One point two. But I'd, I'd like to explain that $2 million from many months ago. Right, now. And, I, and I was going to go yeah. there, but okay. I'll let you do it because no. you've got more detail than I have. No, I won't go into great detail, but we got to stop spending money and, and the bills that are, keep coming in. Right. And the contracts are legally responsible for until June 30th. And after that, we'll be kind of free of those. Some. And I don't, I don't place the burden on the board or you. I place the burden of that information on your finance officer. I mean, if I had a C, as a banker, if I had a CFO come to me and lose $2 million or not know where it was or when it was going to hit their balance sheet, They'd be having a problem. You do understand that's not my current finance officer. Right? Okay, I just do for the understand. record, that, that yeah. she is the one that helped uncover this. Mm -hmm. So my team is strong. Right. Um, so uh, what we're what we're faced with right now is trying to solve a problem mm -hmm. and trying to come up with an addition to our attempt to reach as close as possible a revenue neutral budget for our citizens which means some people are looking for revenue neutral, some people want us to spend money. That's what always happens. I mean, I don't think we've ever come into a point where we're not in a situation where just, there's an element that want to spend it and an element that want to save it. Just, so. I, I shudder to think where we would be if, if I were not fiscally conservative. Oh. And where we would be with not the $7.5 million in credit. Absolutely. We'd be broke. We'd be in the red. I agree. And I, I just ask that you take that into consideration. Even Ms. York said on the phone that this is not an educator-friendly budget. No. It's not. Uh, I'm asking, though, for, for 867930 to make us be able to float and survive while we continue to clean up our current budget. That's all I have. Ms. Thompson. Uh, um, just a thank you, Dr. Butler. I appreciate you more than I you. I apologize know. for being so hoarse. I know. We were yelling and fighting last night, so that's what I know. It's all your fault. <laughs> we're both cheerleaders. Um, I just remember when my middle daughter, who is a school teacher now, was in um, her senior year at Williams, and that big storm come up on the track field, and they had this giant tent, and the pole come up and hit her right in the back of the head. And you could feel the concave in the back of her skull. We had to go to a pediatric neut uh, neurologist. It was a long thing, about it, but she got a concussion. And um, that's not something that just goes away. I can remember Dr. Moffitt, when I was on the board with her, was very strong being a pediatrician and having athletic trainers to make sure that can be identified on the field. We watched a Buffalo Bills player die on the field, and if not for athletic trainers, 
he wouldn't be back at practice this week. It's absolutely amazing. And um, the good Lord spared him. And, um, and I think about um, supplements for our teachers, and I think about all the incentives we give these giant industries to come in, because that's just part of it. What are you going to give me if I bring this to you? And it's the same principle with a teacher. What are you going to do for me if I bring my education expertise and put it in your classroom to lead your children? Instead of you being so short, like we see across our country. And, um, and I read today where 10% of all high school students attempted suicide in 2021. That come out of the North Carolina Child Fatality Task Force that I served on for six years. That's big stuff. And that's just what is known and what's been in the stats. You don't know if that's all of it. We've got mental health issues, and uh, we've always had them, but now sometimes they're in politics. One year it's human trafficking, one year it's opioid crisis, uh, then it's mental health. They're all the same thing. They all affect the same people. I work with that every day. And um, I often think, what if we just cut athletics? I wonder how that would go over. Because, you know, you got coaches that have been working for hardly nothing. I don't know if they've ever had any kind of raise or anything. And, and that's a real passion uh, and a real commitment because they, won't, they know what part of a life that changes, you know. Um, I mean, we had to stop that during COVID. And I thought, oh, this is going to be devastating to young people. And we just, um, I... <sighs> We just seemed it always seems to come down to kids. And we adults are responsible for things that um, children do because they're not wise, they're not mature, they make choices, we've seen that. And we have to learn from those choices, all of us do. So um, I, I, can't, um, I can't support my school system enough when it comes to bare necessities because um, I don't want just fill in. You don't. You just don't get somebody to teach a Sunday school class. You get somebody who wants to teach a Sunday school class. I taught the fourth grade at my church, and I had 18 boys and six girls. I, I was in like North Korea because they they were gonna eat me every week. But you have to be on your game, and that's what a teacher does. And and that's the most important thing because all these incentives we give all this industry has to have a workforce that our school system prepares these kids to grow up to be. So it's all connected, whether we like it or not. So um, I just want to make sure that. We give the tools for our teachers to do the same while we are supporting our teachers, like DSS, same thing. It's all the same principle, and because they're all connected, I think, you know, teachers are front, front end people. They're right there in the classroom every day, and we don't know what they face with what kids face at home and bring to school with them. We are seeing the outcomes of juveniles and the decisions they're making, deadly criminal. So. Um, I just, uh, I'm just glad you're here, Dana. I know how you are. I know your character. Your board's behind you. If I was on your board, I'd be behind you, and I'm still behind you. So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lashley. Oh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, um, <clears throat> Superintendent Butler, for being here tonight. We, um, I, uh, I actually appreciate the fact that you're here speaking up for your crew. But I have a few questions. I expected that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I heard a lot of things here tonight with the people talking. Did you, did you hear the lady who spoke about her daughter? Who she asked the teacher for a fan for her room because the HVAC wasn't working? Mm -hmm. I wonder if she knows that your school board took $10 million out of that program and gave it to the employee. Mm -hmm. I will say that was federal money that they gave us, not you. I understand. Okay. okay. And that so was previous administrations as well. Since, since you bring it up, yep. I'll ask you a question. Okay. You know, personally speaking, I like the way you were able to acknowledge exactly where that money came from. That's awesome, and I'm, I'm so happy that you have your finger on the pulse there. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, um, Dr. Butler, I, I would like to uh, request some things. Okay. I would like to request bullet points of any and all raises that ABSS has handed out and received from any and all employees from March 2020 until present. And I'd also like to know what the funding source was. And you just gave me one, mm -hmm. which is perfect. That's exactly the kind of information I'd like to see. We're an open book, whatever you want. And I do appreciate it. Yep. And, I, and that's what I respect you for. Sure. So, it's because you are an open book. And I appreciate you being honest mm -hmm. with me. Thank you for that. Uh, I guess the, uh, the question I wanted to ask you is your presentation, concerning your presentation. Uh, your presentation in it had, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, had multiple cuts in it. 
Are you referring to the seven point five million dollars? I see teacher allotments. You're going to move some teachers around. There's some things. Those are positions, right? Really, are are over over allotted, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, So we're making our class size a little bit bigger, so we have enough money to survive. Okay, Uh, but I'm just pointing it out that your presentation also had cuts in it for staff. Correct. Okay. So I'm not following you. Well, what I'm saying is if you had cuts in it for your staff, then why are you putting it on the county commissioners that if we don't give you the proper money that you're going to have to cut staff anyway? Even you've more. Already, even more. Even more. That you're gonna even more. Okay. Even more. And I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the fact that you uh, told us about your fund balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really appreciate that. It's not that. pretty. Oh, it's not pretty at all. Not like $42 million. No. No. But we have a lot to take care you of. You do. We have a lot. That's a big number. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of hard work went into saving Absolutely. That That's what I'm trying to do, too. Yeah. I hope you see that. Absolutely. From our relationship this past year. Abs- absolutely. Good. I completely do see it. Um, but I, that's that's really only questions that I, okay. that I that I actually had. It just, I just wanted to sort of compare that your, your presentation had cuts in it as well. But you're telling me that, that those cuts are just could be Those cuts are already accounted for. Compared. So... Based on the decision tonight, we'll decide if I have to make more cuts. Uh, Again, it could be athletic trainers, coaching supplements, teaching increases in supplements. That's one pot. It could be a RIF reduction in force, who's left from the original allotment reduction, or it could be that you agree to give us eight six seven nine three zero. So it's going to be people who are already in place, not the not the allotment reduction that we already done. We could look at music and arts, things that are not reading and math, because I can't cut that. So all the, the frivolous stuff, you want to call it that, that maybe you guys don't think we need. Well, I was just under the assumption that the state of North Carolina provided teacher pay for you. Te- provided what? Teacher's pay. They do. Their allotment. We get, we're given an allotment. Mm-hmm. And what I'm trying to say, and to being transparent, is in the past, we were over, we were over allotting ourselves. Okay. We are putting that in our budget. We shouldn't have been done, doing it. Okay. That's why we're broke. I'm trying to fix that, sure. but I can't do it in one day or one month or oh, one com- year. Completely and this eight six seven nine three zero is killing me. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Chairman. Public safety, you do acknowledge that we're providing an SRO for every school. You are. Thank you. Uh, Leaky roofs. My wife, as you well know, taught for 42 mm-hmm. years, and I cannot remember a year that Alamance County School Systems, one, were given money to repair roofs, and they still have buckets yep. catching water. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, they simply allotted monies for purposes that were not. There's, it, you know, county commissioners give you money, and I don't mean you. You mm-hmm. were not. You were here as a teacher. You were not here as a superintendent and not in the yeah. head leadership position. But county commissioners have continually given the school system money to repair roofs, and it simply never it got shifted to other purposes. I hope you're going to correct that issue. Well, I'll two things. You've not seen me do that yet, correct? Correct. And I don't plan on it. Thank you. Thank you. That's the answer I'd like okay. to hear. Uh, the lady talked about her children not being allowed to take books home, why not? If we don't have enough books for every class that comes through that, that cycle, um, it's a risk, and we don't have the money to replace them. All right, the bonuses... Some, some schools do send them home, but it depends on, again, that's not equitable spending. If one school has the books, another, another doesn't. Ms. Lashley about? mentioned uh, bonuses. Mm-hmm and mentioned the tune of roughly $10 million. That money had already been appropriated by you guys out of the URSA money. Um, the county gets art money. Same thing, it's all the COVID money. The county, they simply call it URSA money. Uh, yep. Same money from the federal government. You had designated that for HVAC systems. I did not. Well, you did not. Again, I, I cannot school, control what happened yeah, before me. The school me. system itself. Yep took that $10 million, and the lady talked about opening windows and no fans. You had the money, I don't mean you, Mm -hmm. the school system had the money, $10 million, to replace or fix those HVAC systems and simply did not do it. I hope you're going to... Mr. Paisley, 
we got to bury the hatchet on that. I'm not going to act that way. Please don't treat me based on what someone else has done. Moving forward, nothing but transparency. Yeah, I just, um, I'm really concerned. Yeah, you know, these ERSA monies are for capital expenses. Correct. And I question in my mind whether school bonuses Sure, all it, not mine. There, there are different pots of monies for ESSER funds. Uh, they expire soon. Um, we've tried to exhaust every penny of that to be good stewards of that money, too, from the federal government. You Should guys, that money have been used for bonuses? Yeah. I can't speak to that. I was not here. But if it were portrayed to you guys as HVAC money, That's what we were talking. then you, you guys should have had a conversation with whoever was here before me to talk about why that wasn't going to happen or to be convinced that it needed to happen. Oh, we didn't know it was not going to happen you go. until the bonuses It was discussed place. in your board meeting. Was I there? Don't think so. Okay. okay. So I, I can only say I cannot hit rewind. If I could hit rewind, I'd look a lot different because I'd use that button for other things. But I can't. So we've got to, again, bury the hatchet. I'm here now trying to work with you very closely and be very transparent about the good, bad, and ugly, just like I am with the community about public schools. Well, I just wanted the lady to know that there had been the monies there and it was reappropriated to other functions. I, yeah, absolutely. Should not have happened. You folks have a public information officer. We do. We, the county, don't have that position because we can't finance it without dramatically going up on the county taxpayers' cost. So that's why <laughs> we don't have that position. We would love to have it. I've asked for it every year I've been on this board, um, and it's still not funded. Well, I think we could all pick apart our total budget. I think we want to do that tonight, though. Final point, I think, okay. I hope. Uh, May the 17th, you appeared before this board mm -hmm. and said, I like the budget. Now, my, ter my words, not your, this mm -hmm. is not a quote. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can find the difference for trainers, coaches, supplements, things of that sort. That you're now coming back for, to us for, at the last minute, we've been through three work sessions, two county commissioner meetings, uh, a public hearing, mm -hmm. and now at the last second, you folks come back in and ask for Almost nine million dollars. Nine hundred thousand. I'm sorry. Nine, that or, that number was not known eight, to me. Eight hundred sixty-nine thousand. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I, I I was correct. We did find the money for athletic trainers and coaches and teaching supplements, but this we can't. I can't find that without making the cuts. Could I do it? Yeah. I'm asking tonight though to not make me do that. Don't I make just, me riff people. Yeah. Or I cut athletic look, trainers. The thing I um, am really concerned about is coming in at the last minute. And asking for us not for a million dollars, I agree. Uh, between eight and nine hundred thousand. Eight six seven nine three zero. Thank you. Uh, at the last minute, and then your board members and public relations individual going on the radio mm -hmm. this morning and saying, "Everybody, hey, we've got a problem at the last second, and now mm -hmm. at our last meeting in June." You want to want to make us look bad for what happened by prior administration, not a prior superintendent, mm -hmm. because they misappropriated monies. I've done nothing but praise you guys tonight, and whether it's the last night or the first night, the money's not there, and I need it. Yeah, and I that's really all I can do is plead to you. And the radio station this morning, it is what it is. Everyone has a right to do that. Oh, clearly. Yeah. I believe in the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first. I believe in the First Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I believe in the First Amendment. Uh, at the same time, I just thought that was a little low shot. Well, I wasn't there. Um, I don't know what was said. I don't think this is last minute. I really don't. I think some comments recently has caused a lot of urgency and tension. And I, you, know, you know who Henry Clay is in history? Henry Clay, yeah, the great, great compromiser? Time. That's what I'm trying to do tonight. I'm trying to mend some fences and get what I need to move forward. That's all. Just, just a comment, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Please. Uh, I mean, there's obviously a lot of history between our board and the Board of Education in this county, just like I'm sure any other county. Uh, we have different roles. We have different responsibilities. Um, 
you know, this history between our board and your board over the last two years. Um, I think the focus ought to be not that, but where we are right now. Well said. And what I'm hearing from you, Dr. Butler, is we can either do, we can either help you with this money in order to get teacher supplements, athletic trainers, and a supplement for coaches. Correct. But we cannot. That's it. And if we don't, then... You don't get all those things. Then I'll make some decisions on my end. You right. make some decisions on yeah. Um, I campaign on a teacher supplement. A teacher yep. supplement is important for the reasons that you mentioned. Last year we talked a lot about athletic traders. That was not in the budget. I think uh, over some conversations that our board had with your board before you got here last year, there, there was – there could have been an attempt for you guys to get athletic trainers within your budget. I think when you got here, you realized there wasn't enough money to do correct. That. That's correct. Uh, but it was it was part of the conversation, and it, it didn't happen. Um, the community, I think, has evolved to a point where athletic trainers mm -hmm. are expected, um, and I and I had supported that. Um, the coaches supplements. I mean, I was in a your board meeting where you had I think up to ten yeah public comments mm -hmm. from. Uh, from ABSS come and provide comments about about how that was needed, that they're not doing it for the supplement, and yet it's been a long time since they've had one, and that sure would help. Um, I think we ought to find a way to make this happen. Let me Appreciate finish that. my remarks, please. <laughs> okay. Um, what happened between May 17th, when you were happy with our budget, and today? What happened? Um, this number has come forth to me that I realize that we, we don't have it. We're still paying bills. Now, what happened between May 17th when you said you were happy with right. our proposed budget? Do you have that recorded? I said I'm happy. We do have. I've got some recordings, too, about matching my teaching supplements. You want me to play those? Miss York? Matching your teaching yeah. All Each one of you said my office and said that to me. And said I'd match your mm -hmm. teaching If I could come up with 1%, would you match it? Yeah. I could, I could do that. You asked me. If I, I did. I sure did. 1%. I did. We even talked about 2%. Your, yeah, your 1% is not 1%, though, sir. 1%. Your 1% is 10%. 1% is $1.3 $1. <coughs> $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. million. Exactly. And it ain't 1%, sir. It's 10%. No, it's You're not. You're currently already getting a supplement of 11, 10 and a half An additional 1% is $1.3 $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. million. Exactly. But it's not 1%, sir. Okay. It, it's okay. 10%. We'll have to agree to disagree. Okay. It's basic math here. If you have 10 and you add, you multiply it by one, that's 10%. I understand. It's not 1%. And okay. that's what, it's, you're, 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 you're making it a little bit difficult when you say the 1% because you lead people to believe that that's only 1% when it's actually 10%. You're already paying them 10 and a half to 12 and a half as a supplement. That comes to my next question. Have you had any contact whatsoever with our state representatives? Because you do realize mm -hmm. that there's talk in the Senate side mm -hmm. and the state side and the House side about increases to teacher pay. But nothing has happened yet. But it's been talked about. Yes. When's the last time you heard five and seven and a half and eleven percent increase in teacher pay? I've also heard point two. Yeah, when well, I've also heard the governor say eighteen. So they're yeah, all I mean, over exactly. the place. Exactly. They're all over the place. So that's why I'm asking you, sir. Yeah. That is something that is a little bit of a misnomer right now because you don't know, I don't know, I'm mm -hmm. asked, but we don't have a concrete number of a number that your teachers are going to get an increase in salary. Understood. Can we just say for argument's sake that it's 5%? I, I wouldn't be comfortable saying that. I don't know. I don't either. Would you agree, though, that I have to try, I have to try to be competitive with our neighboring counties? I have to try. Sure. That's what I'm and doing. And I think that the teacher supplement is pitting counties against each other. I think that all that pay from the teachers should come from the state and leave us out of it. I don't disagree, but that's not the way it is, so I, I have to play the game. I agree. So, so that's what my question is. Since we don't know this arbitrary number, we know it's coming. Mm -hmm. We just don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Have you sort of pout around the number with your staff about what you're hearing from state reps, yep. what you're sort of like, you got to make this an assumption in your Yeah, we're, we're going on we're going with 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. Okay. So that 3%, mm -hmm. I'm just going to take that 3%. I think it'll be higher. Uh, I hope maybe, you're right. Maybe we can have lunch on it. Maybe day. I'm a pessimist. I don't know. No, that's all good. I appreciate it. Uh, but, you know, that 3%, use your 3%, yeah. is automatically going to roll down to Alamance County 0.3 increase for teacher supplement. Okay. That's not quite your 1% that you're looking for, but that's an automatic increase because that's the way it flows. 
if teachers get paid more money, automatically comes to their. Uh, I'm up here system. asking for money, money, so I'm gonna rest my case. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, if I said I was happy, I must have been that night. But right now, I'm seeing the cuts that we're gonna be forced with, and also our fund balance. We had a conversation. I'll admit it. Our fund balance is is deathly low, and I need help until I get it back to where it needs to be. I'm not trying to get a $10 million fund balance. There's no need for that. But we've got to have about $5 million in there for, for whatever happens, or I'm going to be standing here every month. Ms. York, do you have anything that you would like to inquire or ask? I do not. Um, I just had some clarification if there were questions about either what was in the manager's recommended budget or what was presented by the superintendent on May 22nd in terms of his savings and needs. Was that to me or them? That was to Okay. And I don't know, it was the budget that we had before us, and as we replayed earlier today, his comments were that he could make it work that he would he had ways of moving monies around and this and that and whatever, and would cover um, things like trainers and so forth, and that's what we have on that you played back today on tapes. So I think what Dr. Butler's saying is that's what he's already done, tried to do. Correct. Right. I mean, we are where we are. Yeah. Either either we we get the, those three things or we don't. Heidi, uh, do you have any? Um, Susan, do you have any suggestions how we can make this work for him? I do not have a revenue source that I could recommend of that magnitude without changing your property tax rate. Uh, what about... Um, well, know. he's thinking, well, what I'm, tax I'm rate would you time. propose we have? 44. What was that question, sir? See, what tax rate is he proposing that we... I don't have a vote, but you're asking me 44. <laughs> not 43, but 44. That's what I ask. I, I have floated up an idea in a couple of conversations, and uh, we have about 165000 in excess at a 43 budget, 43 cent rate. Right. If you apply that 165 to the 867, and I'm just rounding to 100000 at least seven hundred and two thousand dollars. Now we talked about taking a look at our projection for sales tax, and I know that there's a reason we don't run the sales tax as high as municipalities do. And I've asked Ms. York to discuss that with us tonight and make sure we understand why our sales tax projections are lower. Sure. Ms. York. S Susan, feel free to step Susan, in, either one. one. So counties are part of the Medicaid Hold Harmless, where part of our sales tax is retained by the state for that. And so municipalities don't receive that same, they don't have that agreement for the Hold Harmless. So theirs are slightly higher. I will say, too, that for the past, I don't know, three to four months, our sales tax numbers have not met our budget target. We've come in short consistently, so that has not been a funding source that I'd recommend um, tapping for for these recurring needs. I don't know if you have anything else to add on that. Is the penny still 2.5 million? Right. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be? I, I certainly hope so. Yes. <laughs> um, All right, I'll go being a pessimist again. So we projected a 7% increase in the sales tax rate. Um, a 1% adjustment in the sales tax rate, and I don't have my numbers in front of me tonight, I'm afraid. I think it was about 222. Yeah, is that I think what, close? We, what we put in the budget is 7.7% .7 increase okay. from current year to next year. And a 1% increase, a 1% variance is about 220 something, I believe. 324. Beg your pardon? 324,000. That's right, when you add all three columns, that's the uh, three sources. So, so a, a two cent increase in that projection would take us to what did you say, three what? 324, so that would 324, be 324, so 650 uh, roughly. Jump in here. Are we talking about sales tax? Yes, right. sir. Shit. Carter. Just let me finish. Okay. 
Um, six fifty. So we're within fifty thousand dollars. Now, one of our favorite news sources has been fond of attacking our county manager because she was lower on the sales tax projection than some of the municipalities. Now maybe they have a reason to understand why she was being so conservative, and they are normally fairly con desirous of a conservative outlook. Um, uh, just an option. We've got 165 from the excess at 43 cents and either fund it 702 from the sales from the uh, fund balance or fund it with an increase in the projection on the sales tax, which is a, if, if she's right, it will come out of the fund balance anyway because that's where we'll balance the budget. Right, Miss York? That's correct. So just an idea. Which means that if the sales tax do, in fact, what we're projecting, we take a major hit in our fund balance. Not a major hit. Substantial hit. You like that better? Uh, when we're at 40... I think what? it's just very dangerous. I think we're at 20, fund we're at 22 percent of our target. Or we're 22 percent of our our targets. 20 percent. We're at 22. Now the bad news in our fund balance is that the last two major additions to our fund balance came from our funds. Mm -hmm. That's where we yeah. did a yeoman's job of reimbursing ourselves for our related for COVID related expenses that enabled us to put this money in the fund balance. So that accelerated our process of getting us where we are right now. And that where we are is not where we really probably need to be. Because we don't know what's coming down the pike from one day to the next any more than anybody else does. And as I pointed out earlier, our fund balance is the county's fund balance. It's for every department. Um, we have a major issue, a major expense come up. That's what it's for. So... I don't like taking seven hundred and two thousand dollars and spending it on something that I don't have to. But the school system, <coughs> Dr. Butler and his ma his current management team have done a yeoman's job of projecting forward savings. This didn't come out of that. They didn't save that money this year, correct? And that's obvious in their fund balance issue. Anybody that can save 16% out of their budget deserves some benefit to that. Um, just an idea. As to our county fund balance, uh, I was a commissioner in 2014, mm -hmm. and that commission, uh, and I'd only been on it for one year, I replaced another commissioner for a one-year period. We got letters. I personally got letters from the state of North Carolina because our budget was down to reserve, down to 8%, and they were coming in to take over Alamance County. They will take over our entire system at this point and tell us how to project and, and not spend. Um, we now increase that to 21. 22. 22. Is it 21 or 22? 22. All right, 22. The state is requesting that we have 25, which is still not a lot. It's unlike the school system. You guys run out of money. You come to us. I'm trying not we to. Have, I understand. I'm trying not uh, to. Yeah, we have nobody to go to other than the taxpayers. Right. Uh, so, yeah, our 22 sounds like a lot, but it really is not. Uh, and we never need to be in a position like this county was in 2016. Uh, that's just almost unforgivable. Uh, and I fought hard in 2016 to get us on the right track. Uh, unfortunately, I was not reelected. I lost by eight votes, by the way, in, uh, in 2014. Uh, and so did not continue. Swore off politics until we'll I got talked back into it. <laughs>
<laughs> but it, in any event, was reelected in 2020, of course. Um, yeah, I've known you for a long time. I knew you as a school teacher teaching with my wife. Uh, and you've seen the shortfall in school boards, school superintendents, and I'm not pointing fingers at you at all, and letting roofs just leak and leak and never repairs and receiving the money from the county commissioners and not using the money as appropriated. Uh, thank goodness you're in the position you are now. You've seen it, you've done it, uh, and now you're trying to fix it. And we as county commissioners, all five, appreciate what you're doing. Um, I'm going to propose, and we'll put, I'll put this in the form of a motion, that we set a tax rate of 43 cents. I'm saying that's a third of a penny more than revenue neutral. Uh, that is less than revenue neutral adjusted for inflation. And you're fighting that same battle we're Correct. fighting. We have the same inflation rate that you have. Uh, and we've not been able to adjust for our inflation. But 43 cents, uh, that's going to generate, Miss Evans, how much money in excess of our absolute budget. Oh, and part of that, all those uh, positions that we deferred for the 90 days, all of them, not leaving any, any out, continue to be uh, deferred for that 90-day period. Um, how much surplus, if any, are we going to have? So if I'm understanding the correct the question correctly, the question was if we go to 43 cent, what's the additional that we would see in revenue? And that figure is slightly over a million dollars. Based on our expenses as allocated from our last meeting, but right. adding back in the one 90 day exemption that, that Mr. Sean had, had talked about. That was a million thirty. Yeah, I think so. We can pull up the spreadsheet from the last work session. If you're done with Dr. Butler, we can move. All right, but yeah. part of my motion is we go to 43, hang on temporarily to the extra $1 million, and I understand it's 1.1 1 .1 or whatever, uh, but hang on to it and put it in our general fund initially, defer those positions, all of them, for the 90 days, which will help us, um, and then after 90 days or some period in the fairly near future that we go back and then decide where to put that extra million dollars. And it may well be the school system, but at least we'll have harder numbers at that point. And that's my motion. Um, our question. Are, are we going to go to, is this 6A, because right. we've been talking to the superintendent about his needs, right. are we going to go to the actual budget that we're supposed to talk about, or are we going to, like, just let this be part of that? Because I have some questions about, I want to know the positions that are going to be frozen. I mean, I just oh, have that question. That was I think my that's, point too. Yeah. I was thinking the same yeah. thing. I so think that's, we've, yeah, we've added back in, in my motion, my orders, my motion's not out of order. Um, we'll on that but let's, let's get to that point. Cause, I mean, because well, I, I think we're a, just. I can make a motion it. anytime I like. Well, no, that wasn't what I was saying at all. You can do a cartwheel if you want to. <laughs> I'm just saying this is the school's conversation. This isn't the budget's conversation. I would rather talk about that and, and Dane not. <laughs> Well, I see stand the there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel like, uh, just get it on. Let's. Well, I mean, this is here. very no. riveting, though. It's riveting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's right I'll up there with uh, right. Yellowstone. So um, I'm just, I'm just saying. I think. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. But, Your sense of humor is as strange as mine. Well, <laughs> I'll be glad to sit down when you tell me to. Okay. Are we through with the? I think Bill has some other things okay. to uh, I'm not going. I'm not going to bore you with my questions. We've already went through this. We've already hashed it out. But I definitely would like to see that video. Of that one percent conversation. I would pay you. To, I would pay to see that. Okay. Um, just to see. Um, just between me and you. Um, I'll set a price. <laughs> excellent. He just did. Um, yeah, I know. Sure, Great. I did. It was, it was I know you, and I, you and I have been. Um, been talking about the school system for the past two weeks. 
And the only way I know how to figure this problem out, we don't have the money to give you. And I looked at the sales tax until I was blue in the face, and I'm, I'm a numbers guy, and I, that, that just hurt my dick. I'm feeling because I can't go any higher, because if I do, I am, res uh, I am, I'm going to dig a hole for my county. Because if that, I just banged out the numbers while you were talking. We got $50 million in sales tax last year, and a 7.7% .7 increase is going to be about $3.7 million. Mm -hmm. I know there's something that we can do for you there, but I just don't know if I can do it for you today. Because I won't know until this comes down. But I definitely also want you to know that I want to help you out here. I think appreciate that. Mr. Turner does too. Because mm -hmm. we know in depth of what you're actually dealing with, and we know how you're approaching these problems, and we are totally in support of the way you approach these problems. Now, I just want to tell you this, because I want to tell you this from day one. You've been in front of us three times asking for things that your school system needed. Well, Dr. Butler, I have a lot of faith in you. I and I that. changed all three of my votes to support you on those three things that you asked for. And I just want you to know here that I support you here, too. But it's going to take some finagling. The only way that yeah. I could give you the 867, and correct, correct me if I'm wrong, is my fund balance. That, that's, that's the only yeah. way I can do it. I know, it. I know. Now, if you can wait 30 days, 60 days, we might be able to do something a little more concrete. But the reason I'm even asking you to think about this mm -hmm. is because I've tried to explain to you that there's a lot of numbers that are going to affect you, they're going to affect me, and I certainly would like to see those numbers before I sign you. Understood. Check. So, so there, I don't there's really a fear know of how, the unknown. A big there's a fear of the unknown right now. Yes, the sir. state budget for us. And if, and we don't I, know what's coming. If I actually increased my, I was going to go for three tenths of one percent increase in sales tax to get the nine hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. But Jack. Sir, I cannot tell you what type of risk by doing that I actually bring upon my, my county. And I'm after apprehensive to do that because I'm a stock trader. I know what it's like to have losses, and they don't feel good. Totally understand. I'm at your mercy, and uh, I'm just here to support ABSS as best I can. Well, we want to try to help you. Anything else? Mr. Chairman. Oh. Yes. Yeah, but while ABSS still has the floor, I, I, I wonder if uh, Mr. Engel might shed a little bit of light on uh, a couple questions. Actually, I've got about two or three things that I, I want to say that I cut my, uh, what I was saying before was short because we had the 30-minute rule, so I said, well, I want to let other folks have the opportunity to, and, and I cut out the best part of it, but uh, Greg Hook doing a fantastic job. I know y'all have had burn. I've had burn. This man sitting right here has had burn about the way maybe some of those projects were handled. He's, he's got a start date and an end date, and he's, he's really working hard on it, and I commend Dr. Butler for hiring him and putting him in the position of Chief Operations Officer. So we're going to see those things come to fruition pretty quickly, I would say. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan. And uh, so that, that's number one. Number two, and I know this was a tough one right here. The reason we need to raise that supplement, one penny, it doesn't matter what the state does. Uh, I get to see the personnel reports, uh, and I have to be careful what I say. And I understand that a little. I, I will. I get to see them every month, just like all the board members do. And you know, either east, south, or west, we're losing teachers left and right. They're going to these other districts because they're, they're, they're making more money. So whatever we can do, if the state says, well, we're going to give a supplement, like we're going to give this amount of money as far as the pay increase, well, that's across the whole state. So that 1% might just make a difference and keep a few of these teachers here instead of going elsewhere. And, and, and that's the reason for that. Uh, in, terms of the, in terms of the trainers, uh, as you all know, I'm a coach. I coach uh, middle school girls basketball. They send us through uh, some medical training uh, online. Uh, one of them's COVID protocol, but that's not enough to, you know, we, we had a, a girl uh, that laid on the floor over uh, Western High School for about 40 minutes that blew her leg out. Bad injury before somebody got there. So there's a reason that we need those trainers uh, across the board. So. Uh, I have some things to say, and I want to just get them said, but whatever you can do for us on this, 
Uh, Mr. Chair, we certainly appreciate it because it's needed. Uh, that was another part of my uh, presentation was if you can just give us that uh, $800 uh, we, we'll, you know, we, the 2.5 to 1%, we understand, you know, trying to go revenue neutral. We understand that. But, you know, if we could get that, we'll move on and do the best we can. That's what we'll do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Might just indicate EMS is begging for more money as well. And that's part of that 40 minutes you're talking about. They didn't have the equipment or the personnel. So, um, you, for the young girl on the on the floor, Jim. Yeah, floor. wasn't that? Wasn't, wasn't anybody there? And, and, yeah. and uh, the first call I got was from Coach Tommy Cole from Old Williams High School. The second call I got was from Miss Cole, who was a school teacher retired in the school system. And then the kid, the calls can, kept coming from from you know the Williams Western area. And uh, it just cuts two ways, is what I'm telling you. EMS is wanting more money. You guys need more money. Uh, and it was a 40-minute delay in, in receiving a response, which is not good. And, Mr. Chair, that's the reason. That when I sit in that chair and this one right here, it's, you have tough decisions, and that's the reason I, I said I respect what every single one of you are doing. You need to stay with us, and you need to stay with us. You've got some good ideas in terms of maybe uh, the money, uh, <laughs> keeping it in the coffers here on the county level, and draw an interest and then uh, as long as possible. I think I said that right. I'll, I'll watch your meetings, you know, when I'm not around. So. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank Commissioners, you. anything else from AVSS? Well, that was the reason for my suggestion. That's the only place I can see it, as Bill said. It's the only place we've got right now to try and stay at a 43 cent budget. Chance. Well, just, and like I said a while ago, um, the state of North Carolina plays a teacher salary. My daughter's a teacher. We all got teachers we know. But the supplement is like the 300000 we use for Mebbin for the train turnaround. I know I butchered what that's called. And I also remember Bill and I didn't vote the third incentive on that cookie place because I thought they'd get more greedy. So I'm just going to say that. And I got one of them cookies on my dresser at home. So uh, I, I just think we just need to look at different things as far as what really matters as far as the priorities, which is the future of our county. When it comes to what you put in, we've got the CAP program, we've got the Accelerated College program, we've got all the stuff to really, we've got the military, we've got all these lines of paths for all these children to take what should be what their interest and their passion is. But when it comes down to really having that teacher in that classroom, she's no fool just like all y'all. Look at your incentives when you go get a job. What you gonna do for me? What is it? What, what makes your company better for me to work for than down the road? And you see that in all other areas of this county. But your teachers is the best eight hours of a kid's day in many cases. They are safe, they're fed, they're club. I mean, if we could get rid of the um, school psychologists, the behavioral specialists, the counselors, the all this stuff that you know has nothing to do with math or science, we wouldn't need a lot of the money we have to have. But the school has really inherited the role of the pseudo family because of what the family looks like. We're seeing the outcomes of that in our young people with what they're doing. Uh, you know, how I harp on juvenile crime and all this other stuff. And, and just kids are just breaking. And, um, you know, coaches, they're, the, they're like the dad that they never have. And, um, and I'm telling you, the roles they play, that safety is huge for me. That's, that's really what matters here. But you have got to have the right person standing in that classroom leading those children and making them believe that there's nobody else in the world like them. Because there's not. And each year... You know, they grow and they become something that's the next great for our country. And our country could stand the next great right now. So um, we got to make this happen somehow. And um, we just have to make this happen because um, sometimes you inherit new leadership, you inherit new companies, you buy a new house, and you don't know what you get till you get in there. So I encourage us all to really think about that little, that little set of feet. It's going to be walking in that classroom. And I don't want them in there breaking a sweat. I don't want them water pouring out of the head because when I come before this board and say, get on a bus with me, John, you are a big part of that. Mm -hmm. And let's go look at it. And not all commissioners went. And we went and looked at it. And Lord have mercy, because it looks a lot different than on a cost report. Everything is not just numbers on a cost report. And um, you need to smell it. You need to see it. So I'm sorry. <laughs> But um, I'm just saying, I'm a mom, and I work with troubled kids, and um, we all have in some aspect. 
if there are kids. And so um, I just encourage us to really do the right thing here. And, and whatever happened yesterday, my, my pastor says, you can't fix yesterday, so don't harp on it. Because, Lord have mercy, if I could, I'd, I'd get back and have a conversation with Adam and Eve. But uh, you know, look how that did. So I just encourage us all to really not play tag with who did what and what said what. Let's just do it and do it right. I, I'd rather walk out of here and get my tail kicked tomorrow on any radio station for doing the right thing than for just going along. And um, I just that's just the way I feel. It's maybe just one, but it's, I'm going to stand up for it. Let me defend Tisha slightly. Uh, they're not all in it for the money. Huh? Uh, if, uh, my wife taught in this system for 42 years. And believe me, or believe, believe me that... She could have gone elsewhere and made a lot more money, but she spent 10 years at Willow Middle School and the rest of her 42 at Broadview Middle School. Um, it was not because of just the money, because she's dedicated, was dedicated, and gave a lot of years. So I applaud teachers. John, I would like to know how much you spent for her classroom, because I've spent a bundle in Randolph County, yeah. so it's it, a whole family thing. It was not a small amount. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can, I can say ditto to what John just said. My wife taught for 27 years. Last eight years was at Hall River. Um, I can't tell you how those children became part of our family. Yeah because I heard stories every night about her kids. And I made a point to spend some time in that classroom with her so I could get to know who those kids were. So not every year, not every time, obviously, but uh, I had a job too. But um, uh, I can relate to what we're hearing tonight from that perspective, having, uh, having lived it and experienced it. Um, Greg, I think you would. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know if you were finished. Sure. Just a quick comment on the uh, matter at hand, which is, which is the, the request from ABSS. I, I have, in the last two weeks, poked and prodded and looked under every rock in this budget and have tried to wring out some additional savings. And it's, uh, it, it's very, there may be little, you know, little things here and there, but uh, the big savings just aren't there if we're going to continue to meet the priorities that we've identified in our last budget work sessions. Uh, if we're going to, and I hate to say this because I was hoping to go the other way, um, but if we're, if we're to fund the request from ABS West, which I, I think, as I indicated, that we should, the responsible way to do it, as I see it, not seeing additional revenue streams, is to increase the rate to 43.2, which would give us $500,000. You take out the 165, which we already have, and you take $200,000 out of fund bill. That's, I think, the responsible way. It's not what I wanted to do, but that's, I think, where we are, unless there's something that I don't see. So your total increase for the school would be how much? 867 $930. There may be an additional, um, you know. And we made a few small tweaks yeah. for consideration. You have the compensation accelerated study. If you cut that back to January Sorry, 1. I what you're saying. I was just trying to make a couple more quick tweaks to make it work. I still came up with 43.2. I cut out the compensation study back to January 1. That was 200000 instead of hitting fund balance. Instead of, really I, 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 I would much rather keep that at November uh, to, to okay. the Sheriff's Department's point. The sooner we, the compensation study, as you all might know, is an implementation of a market study to get our hard to fill positions at Sheriff's Office, DSS, and, uh, and EMS at a market rate such that we can be competitive with our, with our fellow counties. And that, um, the sooner, uh, there's some, there's some uh, debate about how soon we can implement that, but sure. if you want to currently it's set to do November 1st, which I think is probably as soon as reasonable. I, I don't want to be there, I just don't see another way to do it. Right, that was 222000 did I hear, Chairman, correctly that you wanted to go back to the original vacant position list for the 90-day freeze? Because that would add another $11,000. Exactly right. So that puts that savings at $214,853 uh, rather than two, um, $203,000. 203, I think is what we had. Well, and just so, just so those that are here tonight that haven't been here before can kind of get a handle on 
on what uh, Mr. Turner just said. One of the pieces that we're looking at is a is a salary study for our county employees, and there's we don't see it possible to implement this at more than one third per year. For three years. So what we're looking at is the first third, yes. which is the place where we are just absolutely torn apart in positions. And we're down roughly 60 positions total, is it 50 or 60? The sheriff's office? Uh, in detention. Yeah. 60. And uh, we're, we're down um, how many positions in DSS, how many positions in EMS? I mean, the numbers are just ridiculous. And Burlington's going up, Guilford's going up, Orange is going up, everybody's going up around us. We keep losing people and spending money to train replacements that then leave us. So we are trying to come up with a way to meet these needs and at the same time not do any more to our citizens than, than we have to. I mean, we are so concerned. I, I, I can't tell you how much I'm concerned about the people that are going to get that tax bill, and it's going to go up. I just looked at mine this last week, and I know how much it's going up. Uh, praise the Lord, I can handle it. But not everybody's in the same boat. No, it gets loose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that's the best thing I've heard all night. Yeah. I'm going to ask that same question Amen. myself. See y'all. So. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> Dr. Butler, I have one question for you. Yes, sir. If, in fact, we give you all or por a portion of these extra monies, uh, you took roughly $10 million and, uh, and reassigned them from HVAC, and I don't he mean did. you. He did. He did. I don't mean Dr. Butler. Um, but the school board mm -hmm. did. $10 million from HVAC systems to bonuses, not salaries, mm -hmm. not adjustment of salaries, can you promise me that that will not happen again? I don't think it's very effective. So, no, I wouldn't do that. <coughs> I don't think it's effective at all. It's not reoccurring. It doesn't do anything for retention long term. Exactly right. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we've done that, too. Yeah. With bonuses. Oh, you there, man. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> we. Yeah. No, actually, he actually voted against I voted against it. <laughs> but I mean, we've I made that then, decision, too. I said then that bonuses are not the way to go. I don't, do I agree with you. Yep, we Pay won. people. Then bonuses are fleeting. We learned the same. That was, it was a four to one vote. It's true. Thank you. All right, thank you. I appreciate your consideration, Mike. Thank you. So Susan is working on the updated spreadsheet. Yeah, I just have, just... You know, instead of making instead of making it uh, forty three point two, how can I, how about I just take it out of fund balance? That's what I said. I mean, and leave the rate at forty three if that's what you so choose. Um, it just seems to be the easiest, cleanest kind of way, and that way maybe we won't have a reoccurring two tenths of a property tax hanging out there. I it's just I like what you said, what, what your idea was. I was just trying to think, you know, if I could bring that rate and leave it at 43 and just take it out of fund balance. But I wanted to ask Susan how that looked. How many times have I proposed that this weekend? Now, I do want to make sure that the 220000 remains in. Yeah, it looks like the number is 653. Correct. What's that now? What? That would, the that, 220. That would be, you know, that is in. Get that for you. Susan added that back in. Thank you. <laughs> but I want to know the total. Well, well, I would that. suggest at this point, uh, it's 8.15, 8.16. We take a 10-minute break, and that gives Miss Evans time to, come, time to come up with her numbers. I thought maybe you... Okay, are we ready to move to item 6B? That is the budget. Amen. I think we've been there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Ms. York, are you ready? We are ready. All right. Um, Sean, do you mind pulling up the um, spreadsheet, Excel please. spreadsheet? I know there's a lot of numbers up here. We'll try to orient you um, to that. This is what you saw the last time we were together at your last work session. 
that time we added a third column of a tax rate of 43 cents and then we have some cuts that the board um, wanted to make some adjustments not all of them are cuts um, some adjustments that have been made um, do you want to take sure, it from I'll be there glad to take it from here um, so you'll see commissioners that on line I believe it's line number 18 is the ABSS additional request of the eight hundred sixty-seven thousand nine hundred thirty dollars? Um, if we were to imp include a point two cent increase, that would benefit five hundred two thousand eight hundred sixty-two dollars, which would then rely on one hundred eighty-eight thousand eight hundred seven dollars of fund balance. So that you would have, if we were to then apply only to fund balance. That would be an impact of six hundred ninety-one thousand six hundred sixty-nine dollars. And that would be a reoccurring expense to the school system. Yes, sir. That would be a reoccurring expense because it becomes part of their operational budget. Which so that would be? Would, that would allow those teacher supplements to move up the one percent. So that would be an additional one percent the following year. Which would be the reason for adding the two two tenths of a penny? I just have just want to go back to what I talked to Dr. Butler about. I mean, there are some numbers that we do not know. Sure. We can have an assumption of what those numbers right. might be. That's right. So, in essence, Susan, uh, what you're saying is, is this is the numbers to how we see it right now? But we could those numbers and will those numbers will change uh, mm -hmm. when the state decides what they're going to do? Because, like I said to Dr. Butler, though. The Alamance County taxpayer is automatically going to get an increase in their teacher supplement depending on what the salary is, That's automatically. So, is there any way, and Dr. Butler, you're more than welcome to chime in here, is there any way that we could sort of like give a... MOU, you call it? I think that's what the government folks call it. Um, to, um, to, to say, hey, look, you know, as, like I told Dr. Butler, I did not lie to him. We... Currently, right this second, do not have the money to give him $867,000. There's ways we can do it. But I would just like to maybe, if Dr. Butler would be okay with this, give him an MOU and say, hey, look, if you can give us 30 days, 60 days to let to see what the state budget comes through. Because if the state budget comes into my number, 5%, we're going to roll a half a percent automatically into teacher supplement. And I think that if we wait until those numbers come in, the impact to the county could be less. Because if you're asking for 1% and the state pulls in 5% and we automatically go to a half, then the county only has to come up with another half percent. Am I right or wrong? That once the state determines what the rate, what the salary is going to be, the county automatically goes up 10%. Right. So... So the county piece is formulated and calculated off of whatever the state salaries do. Um, my concern with that, and I will defer to legal counsel, is that as the school system is lining up teachers for the next year, come JLI 1, they would need to know what that teacher supplement would be because that's going to be in the teacher's contract for, for pay, annual pay that year. Okay. Um, so without getting in too much of the weeds of how Dr. Butler and his staff have to prepare those teacher contracts, they would need to know up front what could they have that teacher salary and teacher supplement to be. Okay. Let me interrupt Let there. Uh, instead of helping us, it's going to hurt us because we're going to pay more money on those increased percentages of salary. Am I correct? If the, if the salaries were to go above what... Commissioner Lashley, what the school system has asked for now, then yes, there would be a deficit. And if I'm not mistaken, in previous years when we have had salary changes that come through state legislation, is that the school system has, without sounded, just made it work of implementing the increases that they have, moving teacher salaries the way that they need to, advancing that teacher supplement, and balancing it within their own local dollars that are committed for education. But that's up to them. And that's up to them how they fund it. additional monies, we take another hit. So in years where the state has not advanced the salaries as much, there has not been a, 
let's give money back to the <coughs> county government. Once you all vote on what their allocation is for the year, that's what they get, and it's theirs to allocate in the purposes that they need. Teacher supplements, coaches supplements, operational whatever needs, priorities. teachers, whatever priorities they have. So the exposure to us doesn't go up beyond that point. No, it does go up. She just said it Potentially. Well, next year could be. I mean, in, in for next, the next year. year. It, yeah. yeah, but not right now. But for the current, and when I'm meeting next year, Commissioner Paisley, I'm talking about fiscal year, the upcoming budget, fiscal year 23, 24. You and I are saying exactly the same yes. thing. So they would then have to look at what their funding needs would be for fiscal year 24-25 to incorporate any pay raises that the state legislation passes. Yeah. Haven't we been in a position before, like, our well, when I was on the board, the budget starts July 1, and the state hadn't passed their budget. Correct. I mean, it's like, let me go just rub a lamp. I mean, it's yeah. some, depending on how they're getting along and just what they're looking at. So that is not a definite date that anybody can count on. That's a good thought, but you just never know. I think they're under the same budgetary restraints that we are. June 30th, you cut off, but we can't miss that date, and they do. Right. It kind of leaves you hanging. As I, as I understand the situation, Dr. Butler intends to give a 1% a one increase based on current numbers, which is $1.3 million. If the state increases teacher salary, he's still got $1.3 million, but the percentage becomes less. So it becomes point, you know, point 0.8 or, or whatever, whatever the percentage is to the actual state pay. So the number doesn't change. Our, requ our requirement to pay doesn't change. Uh, and, it, and it also doesn't carry forth to the next year. We're not saying we're giving an additional 1% next year. Mm -hmm. we're, just, we're just applying these numbers to this year, which he can apply as he wishes. Is that correct? Is that a correct. correct assessment? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, is there, you know, just thinking forward here, let's just say we, we got to make some assumptions here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have any, is there any way that we can limit our payment for the 1% increase in teacher supplement to make it tops 1.3 1 1 million? That's it. The reason I'm saying that is if, if we do this now, and then the state comes in and gives the teachers a 5% increase, that means that the teacher supplement is going to go up another half percent. That's another $650,000 that we do not have. Actually, what she just said was that means the percentage of their supplement will actually go down. Next year. Well, you're, this giving, year. A, you're giving an amount for current expense, period. That's right. They have a current expense. That's right. And it's for their... They decide what percentage is going to go to salary supplement. That's not a... Commissioner decision. But do we have any idea how they're looking at this? Who, Dr. Butler? <laughs> <laughs> we talk about you like you're not sick. Right? <laughs> Your shoes are going to wear out walking back and forth and up here. <laughs> Will you restate your question real quick? I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, I, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the supplement for our teachers is a, a, a percentage. Mr. Rogers, yes. <laughs> some experience up here. It's my deputy superintendent, personnel guru. So, you want to explain this? No now you're a guru. Huh? <laughs> Remember that at, at negotiation time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I believe the question is how how do we account for if they do a five percent increase where we're currently at, under advisement in the past by uh, North Carolina Department of Instruction is to use a three percent increase as far as planning and so that's where we came up with the or we, we use the three percent as a number okay but um so if, if you're saying we would just have to we would have to try and find areas to be able to fund that additional two percent and that salary increase i guess what my i guess would be a little more pointed in my question is the alamance county taxpayer going to be on the hook for more than 1.3 million dollars if the a supplement from the state comes down more than what i just gave you I believe what staff was saying was that basically you're allotting a specific amount to us, mm -hmm. and that comes to us, right. and then we're, we make that work in our budget. How well, what I'm saying, sir, is like, let's say we get, to, get all this taken care of, we're settled, and then and next week, 
-hmm. the state comes in and says, hey, we're giving teachers pay 7.5%. Mm -hmm. Do we have any recourse to come back and renegotiate that number? Are you going to take the 7.5% additional and stick it on top of what I just gave you? So in essence, instead of your 1% teacher supplement, you'll have a 1% plus whatever the state gives you so. teacher supplement. I think that would really be if it was less than the 3% we're planning on yeah, I don't think is that. what it would be. So you're but, actually, you're, you're an organization saying, okay, 3% raise, that's what you're planning on? Well, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I like the conservative nature estimate. in that. It's, it's an it's estimate. I mean, we don't know. Because you could definitely come in at 6 we don't know. So, so I, can, yeah. I, I, I like that. Yes, sir. They're working behind closed doors, so that's not really a public The real kicker is, is the following year, oh, I know. then we take another hit. But this year, if, if, if the state were to go up five and you're budgeting three and our and your planned percentage of the supplement of the planned salary is a 1% increase, I'm coming up with a real algebra question for you here, and I'm going to figure it out myself. Um, the net impact, as I see that, is that your percentage of the supplement will actually be less than the target of 10. Am I correct? We think so. Yeah. I'm okay. trying to follow it. Yeah, I, I'm thinking what's going to happen is what they're going to be paying in a in a supplement if the salary goes up with what we're allocating, the supplement will be less. I agree. Totally agree. Percentage. Just wanted to hear it out loud. Y'all know that game you used to call eight ball yeah. and you would shake it? <laughs> we really need one for DPI. Mm -hmm. I think it would help us. <laughs> This is so uncertain. Me and my cousins played that all the time at my grandmother's house. You make up your questions to yeah. suit you with the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Board, any other questions of Ms. York, Ms. Evans, or Dr. Butler? No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dames. Thank you, Dames. Not a purpose. Can I, are we, what are we doing? Because I wanted to ask about frozen positions. Sure. I mentioned that before. I just want to know what's being frozen and why is it if it's frozen for three months and then it's not frozen? What does that mean? Okay. The frozen positions were, we looked at that at the last work session and it was in a handout. Got um, it. So those positions, it was a snapshot in time at that point, what positions were open. And so those are the positions that we've included on line um, 13. Sorry, I think it's line 13. It says a 90 day. Uh, hiring freeze. So those are all the positions. There's um, 15 positions, it looks like, mm -hmm. like that. Did you put the veterans back in there? Veterans is on there, yes. I know there was talk at the last work session. So it's you on see. the cut or it's on the, the I, freeze? I, I thought I just heard yeah. Chairman Paisley say, go back to including all positions. So on that line, we had reduced it to 203,000 when you removed the veterans. So I thought I heard him say, put it back in. So now I'm looking at 214,000 as your savings, and that includes all of the positions without the exemption for veterans admin. Let me explain to you why I'm doing that. One, um, would you like Ms. to see it? No, is JCPC on there? Ms. Crawford indicates that they had a resignation or a firing. I think she, I think she said firing. Uh, so they went from five positions to four. Um, that position is currently open. Um, out of those five positions, only one, a single employee, was a veteran. That's problem number one. She indicated, that is Ms. Crawford, the Director of Veteran Services, that we are servicing 40% of those that we're servicing at one point, and I think there's another point, 60%, and I'll use the smaller number, of those serviced by Alamance County are not Alamance County citizens. So we're servicing Guilford County, Orange County, and all of our surrounding counties, almost up to, you pick the number, 40%, 60%, whatever it is, we should be servicing Alamance County residents, not all our surrounding counties, which we're currently doing. Um, I asked Ms. Crawford, why are we, because they're veterans. Well, I understand they're veterans, but Guilford County only has, I've gotten one or two employees for all of Guilford County and, and veteran services. 
Orange County is one or two. You know, we're way overpopulating our veteran services compared to all our surrounding counties and then servicing the other counties. We taxpayers should not be paying for that. Uh, we ought to be dropping them back to four positions, period, and they ought to be veterans. Uh, if we're not getting veterans, then we ought to be advertising for veterans to apply for jobs. They're the ones that need it anyway. So I just don't want to give special preference to that one department and then slighting all of the others, including the Sheriff's Department, DSS, and everybody else for the benefit of one agency that is not, I think, running their department correctly. And they have closed doors, locked doors, had three calls this weekend from veterans. Hey, when I go to the veteran services, I have to ring a doorbell, hopefully recognized, and then I might get to talk to somebody. So if they are locking their doors, I, I just have a lot of problems with that one particular department. And I think it needs to be corrected. Um, and we ought to be servicing Alamance County, not Guilford, Orange, Rockingham, and so forth. Well, I, I just add to that from what I've heard in different areas of the state, um, the Guilfords and the Oranges, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like diss anybody, but with that small amount of staff, that might be why they're coming here oh, they, because they're they being are. served, and yeah. we're one of the best VCOs in the state. Mm -hmm. I'll put anything to that. I mean, you go to any conference, and I mean, they're highly respected, and um, they didn't ask to be moved where they are. They were in another part of that building, and then planning took their section or downstairs or wherever it was. It's been a while, and the door is strictly safety. Um, that's 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 another thing because I mean we have to you show our badge to get on that elevator to come up here because of safety and then you've got, got to give a kidney to go to third floor because I don't there must be some kind of vault or something up there <laughs> that I've yacht found you know but I'm just saying safety nowadays with what you see happens you just cannot be safe enough and we all know that we have guards downstairs for us to come through at the courthouse everywhere and, um, and I don't know of any VSO that their entire staff is veterans. It's be kind of like us hiring somebody here and saying, well, if you don't have blonde hair, we're not going to do what I have. You know what I mean? You just can't pick and choose what you want. You want the qualified person. And don't take that like that. It's like teachers. You want the qualified oh, person man. no matter no, no, John, you're not understanding. It's I what I'm trying to right. tell you is you're wanting to have all veterans working somewhere that would be like having all of us stockbrokers running this. I mean, you just have to, you want to hire the best person. That's what I'm saying. And I think that's what they've done. They've hired the best people. And for the one that's just become an officer, of course she has to go and get trained because you want training for that. That is not an easy job. And it was all kind of stuff that I don't even understand what all they do. My son had to go there when he come out of the service and it was just wonderful. Get you with the hospital, get you checked for disabilities and all this stuff. So Craig could be a better person at that to talk about it. He's a veteran, and he's on their board. But, um, I mean, I just, um, I don't, what you may hear may be something different from somebody else hears. And that's why it's always good to have the complete story and bring them all up here and ask them these questions, you know, instead of us just assuming what we're told by some. Um, I, I don't never assume anything. I, I just want to hear it straight out of the horse's mouth. Ms. Thompson's but, correct. One of the or they have employed there is not even certified and is working on certification now. So she can't even help the veterans. She's in training. Well, she does a lot in the office. I know that. She was the front end person too. And you know, I'm just saying, we just, we just can't hire all of one thing. I want to hire the best person for the job. Well, That's what matters. Put a little bit of history on it too, I think. But and I, it's, this is going back a couple of years, but if I remember from some previous meetings, mm -hmm. one of the problems that they have, that they're dealing with with numbers of veterans coming in, is some of the surrounding smaller counties don't even have a veteran right. services. That's right. So if they don't have it, they have to go someplace. So are we going to tell veterans who are in, in need of service that if they live in Caswell County, they don't have any place to go? No, we can tell Caswell County they ought to have a well, we can say that all day long. I don't think we tell Castle County to do anything. That's true. <laughs> but I, I'm, 
Craig will tell you, he didn't pick a certain sky to fly in. And my son said, no, I don't feel like going to that country. I want to go over here. Yeah. So, um, you know what I mean. You go where they tell you. That's the veterans. And thank God for every soldier before, during, and after. So. I just don't want us turning veterans away when they're in need. No, they're, all, they're really struggling. So, you know, everybody struggles if you've got some stuff. So. Take care of the ones who took care of us. Ms. Rourke. All right. <laughs> Back to our list. We've included the school's request on there. There is a fund balance appropriation. There is also an adjustment on the tax rate. Happy to make adjustments further as the board would like. I think the tax rate at 43 and what Bill suggested about the fund balance is a safe way to go with that. I think both sides benefit from that. So, that ain't no motion. That's right. So <laughs> what we're showing up there is a 43.2. Right. Well. Otherwise, we're hitting the fund balance, and we felt like this was such a large mm -hmm. recurring expense yeah. that that was not our best option. I just got one question. Yes. I just want to hear from Ms. Evans here. Um, since you're the professional here. Um, Ms. Thompson is right. I, I did suggest 43 even rate, but um, you know, looking at these, uh, I think you're the one that pointed out to me it's a reoccurring expense. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, it's a reoccurring expense, you probably need to make that rate higher. If we're gonna have to deal with these numbers next year, we may need to start from 43.2. I didn't say that to tie you in. No, ma'am. You because what you said yeah. is what I said. But I was then, just supporting that. Uh, and and believe me, I wish I could, I wish I could do it. But knowing that we're going to have eight hundred thousand dollars in reoccurring expenses, you probably shouldn't tie yourself into a and, and start off next year in an eight hundred thousand dollar hole. Because if I was going to do that, I'll just take it out. I would just make a bet that we're going to beat the the rate that we have ourselves for sales tax I mean but that is a game right sales and, tax uh, is a gamble. Um, I wasn't I wasn't elected a gamble I do that at my job enough um, yeah well oh, like we're ready I'll go ahead and get started I'll make a motion we make the revenue the, the, the revenue number of 43.2 I'll second it. Can we get verification of that in, please? Does that reflect all of the changes that you see up there, including the adjustment on the 90-day number? Yeah. For the veterans. For the veterans' position, position specifically. Okay. Is that a second? I second it. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a, an amendment <coughs> to the motion. I'd like to move to amend the motion only that we reinsert the veteran's position in, into the 90-day hiring freeze. So put it back in, take the cut out. That's what we have. Does he have to get that second? Yes. I'll second. That's what, that's what we're reflecting. Well, we'd have yes. to amend so our motion. So Bill well, I think, well, I think the amendment stands on itself to be voted on is, as a... Is he a That's correct. Amendment? You have a vote on the amendment first. That, that's right. And then you have a vote on the amendment. But we, we need to make sure we're not saying the same I think thing. You're, I think you're saying the same thing. Oh, are we? Close. So <laughs> it's, all re, it's all revolving around the veteran's position. It is. So is it funding it fully mm -hmm. or with a 90-day phrase? Funding. I understood phrase. Mr. La point of Point of information. I understood <laughs> yeah. Mr. Lashley's uh, <laughs> motion cut it. My amendment was to reinsert the position so eliminate the cut okay okay so just for full disclosure if that is the amended motion what that would then do is have fund balance allocation of <coughs> ninety nine thousand nine hundred twenty dollars so it just it changes your bottom line figure Can you sure one hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred twenty dollars so it's roughly a twelve thousand increase yes 
And what would that change your 43.2 number? No. It stays, stays the, the same. same. Stays the same. Right. Yes, the adjustments handled through fund balance. Call the question on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. No. All right. Now we have a motion <coughs> of the 43.2 at this point, excluding with the amendment the cutting of the Veterans Services fifth position. What? Do what? <laughs> yeah, that was the original motion. Yeah. We just voted to yeah. add the amendment. Right. right. The, the amendment it, passed. Right. It, yeah. Not yeah. excluding the veteran oh, service you said position. Excluding. Sorry. Right. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> no. So that, that vote was on the amendment to the original motion, and now we need to vote on, on the, the actual rate itself, exactly. including the amendment that was just As passed. amended. Right. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. No. Okay. Guys, I just can't vote above 42. 43, I'm sorry. It's okay. Doesn't okay. make me feel good either. Thank you, John. None of us wanted to. No doubt. Okay. Um, we now have county attorney's report. Nothing for me tonight. Thank you, board. All right. County manager's report. Nothing to report, sir. Thank you. County commissioner's report. Mr. Turner? Um, I just want to thank everybody who came out uh, at a public hearing, who came out at this meeting, who watched three work sessions. Um, a lot of passion for everybody who came out. There were phone calls. There were texts. There were emails. Everybody who expressed a position and just choosing to engage with government to a state of position, I applaud. Um, this has been a very, very difficult budget uh, year. With the reval, with deciding on where to make cuts from the managers recommended, it has been difficult. And I don't ask for sympathy, I just say it has been, and I appreciate, I have poked and prodded staff. Uh, I, have, I have made difficult decisions and, and difficult conversations with friends. Um, I don't, po don't apologize for that, but, I, but I'm saying thank you for staying in this and for being professionals. Um, it's been a long road, and I'm, I'm glad that we can finally turn the page on it. This budget's not perfect, uh, but it's, uh, I think, a good compromise. And I think I, don't, I didn't want to go for, certainly above 43. I wanted to go the other way, but I think it's the only responsible choice to make in order to get the school system the funding that it needs. Thank you. Ms. Carter. Well, I agree. Uh, it's, uh, our goal was revenue neutral. When we found that was going to be near to impossible, we came to what we thought was a compromise at 43 cents. We found out we had another need, and we all know how important the school system is to all of us. And we are very proud of the superintendent we now have and his efforts on the behalf of the citizens of Alamance County. I applaud him and his board for their efforts and their work. Um, I will say, uh, when I came on this board um, almost five years ago now, I worked for over four years, for four years of that time to try and get an SRO in every school. And I'm proud to say we finally got there. And we're gonna be there again this year. Our efforts and your efforts. So, we want to keep our kids safe, but the safety goes beyond having a law enforcement officer in the school. Safety means the roof isn't going to fall, a piece of roof isn't going to fall on somebody's head. Um, we've got a challenge. You guys have a challenge. The school board has a challenge right now. You've got an aggressive um, list of needs that need to be accomplished, and I believe you feel like you've got the right person in place to get the job done. I hope that's correct, because you need to move that forward. We need to stand in here with you. We need to get the schools fixed. $150 million didn't get the job done all, all the way. We knew it wasn't going to get the job done all the way. That's the reason for the uh, 
what do you call that, 3.3 million, I never can get that right. Paygo Capital. Paygo uh, plan. Um, but even that's 3.3 million. The problem with that is it's impacted by inflation too. It buys less now, just like everything we do. You know, you look at county government, if you take your household budget and you go to the grocery store, everything, my wife tells me every time she comes back from the grocery store how much more how much more stuff has cost me. Look at the county. Every single thing we touch, from gas to the school buses to gas for sheriff's cars or our equipment, uh, repairs, maintenance, every single thing we touch is going up. Salaries to be competitive, to try and keep people. Nobody wants to make a 911 call and have nobody show up. Nobody wants to make a nobody wants to be in the middle of a heart attack or be in an accident and have nobody come to offer service. Nobody wants to have a need at their home and need and need law enforcement and have nobody show up. And if you're in law enforcement, you don't want to be any longer than you have to be from your backup. And when you're short-handed, your backup time it can get longer. You don't want to be there if you're that guy. Northeast Alamance County, almost in Caswell County, and you're by yourself. That's not fun. Um, I don't envy that person. And we ought to praise the Lord every day for every one of those fellows that agree to put that badge on and defend us. They're irreplaceable folks, and we're having to try and replace them every single day right now and that's why we've implemented the salary study plan and we've got i believe unequivocally we have to stick to it i know there are going to be people say you don't need to hire more people we're trying to replace people we've lost and you got once you get them replaced it's a whole lot cheaper to keep them than it is to find more and put inexperienced people out there on the road or in the classroom or anywhere else so I applaud this budget. It's not where I wanted it to be, but I think it's an unbelievable compromise in light of what everybody around us is doing. And I praise Graham for hanging in there. They came in better than we did. I don't know what I don't know what, what cuts they made yet, but um, I just uh, I appreciate everybody's efforts, and I say to. Uh, to all of to everybody who showed up tonight, I agree with what uh, Commissioner Turner said. I mean, government, I've said over and over and over again, government is all about doing this, not this. We have to work together to solve the needs of our communities and our, the needs of our people. And I think tonight we've demonstrated a real effort to try and do that. And I'll thank my fellow board members for their work. I can guarantee you, from the conversations I've had, it wasn't easy, it was painful. Mm -hmm. We've all struggled on behalf of our citizens. Ms. Thompson. I, I just ditto, it's, um, it's we're honored to be here, and it comes with ebbs and flows for sure. And um, the school system in this county, the taxpayer is really putting their necks out for everybody's children. And so now I'm going to say, parents, you need to show up. You need to really show up for your kids at whatever the school needs them to do. And it's so important that you're there because your kid knows when you're not. And uh, with what's going on with children nowadays and things facing them, they need all the support they can get. The school is not their parent. The school is their educator. And, um, and I'm just I'm, I'm so glad we got to see the faces of the chiefs of the volunteer fire department. I'm glad they got to be put in the spotlight. What they do is just amazing for so many. And, um, and it's, um, um, I, I just appreciate how we've all really worked. And I know how hard they've worked. The, I mean, calculator over here, I, I know how hard they've worked. And so um, it's, um, it's been an honor to be part of them. And, and it's plus and minuses, but um, I feel solid about what we've done. It's not easy, but it's, these citizens are worth it. Everybody's worth it. Taxpayers worth it. I don't want anybody paying any more than they have to. I'm a taxpayer. But I, I'm going to always side with um, with, the, with safety and um, those who take care of that safety. And the school is a big part of that. Best eight hours of a kid's day. So. 
Mr. Lashley, before I call on you, does your motion include the fire tax rates that we have talked about? Everything, Mr. Lashley. So that's inclusive? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. <coughs> Good. Mr. Lashley. Thank you, Chairman. I uh, just want to, first of all, thank everyone, like uh, Commissioner Turner. Uh, it's really very, very important that you uh, take your liberties at heart and, you know, let your government know what you want and what you don't want. That's the best thing about this whole process that I've really enjoyed. Has it been fun? No. <laughs> uh, has it been taxing? Yes. Have I learned something? Absolutely. But I also just want to thank the school board for their uh, willingness to stand up for what they believe. Do I agree with it all times? No. Nope. But I don't expect you to agree with me all the time. But I do thank you for your work. Uh, I just want to thank my staff, especially the county staff. You folks are amazing, absolutely amazing. And and I know Heidi, you're probably so thankful that this week is over because this is your first budget. And I know how hard you've worked. I know how how hard you've thrown yourself into this process to try to be a facilitator of what what this board wants. And we do appreciate it. And we also appreciate Miss Evans too, because I don't know what we would do without you. Yeah. Your expertise is amazing. Uh, if we have any, if we're a little bit iffy, we always know that we can talk to Susan and she will point us in the right direction. And we do appreciate all you've done. Um, um, I must admit, when I walked in this door tonight, 43.2 was not in my wheelhouse. So I hope you guys appreciate it. Absolutely. And just going to let you know, Dr. Butler, that I'm going to be one of the hardest critics of your organization going forward because you really have put me in a bad spot. But I don't, like I told you before, I have a lot of faith in you and I have a lot of trust in the work that you're doing is for the best for Alamance County citizens and students. Uh, but I just wanna let you know that I'm gonna keep a close eye on your organization going forward to make sure that we are seeing things the right way and there's gonna be no more surprises. And I like that. Uh, but I just wanna uh, tell everyone thank you so much. I wanna thank my board for their hard work. I know it has not. Been easy. It's been a lot of late night phone calls, and um, you know it's bad when your chairman calls you at 1 a.m. Um, but I just want to thank everybody uh, involved here, and uh, I know that this is probably some people in the county are probably not going to like these ideas or these changes that we've made. Uh, but like Ms. Thompson said, it's not really, it, believe me, if I could have changed the outcome of this, I would have. But believe me, I went through this budget. I won't do it again because it was just too taxing. I lost a lot of sleep trying to work for the Dallas County taxpayer because I know that they are the ones that are going to get this bill in September. And when they see that bill, they're going to think, what did Bill Lashley do to help me out? Well, tonight I didn't do as good as I should have. But the only thing I can tell the taxpayers is I promise you that I am going to keep a close eye on spending going forward, so maybe we won't have to deal with this again next year. Thank you, Chairman, for your time. Let me correct his statement. I did not call him at 1 a.m. I called him at 12.58. Oh. <laughs> That's totally different. Yeah. Well, one final comment, if I might. Well, let me, let me finish. Uh, I oh. want to thank all of you guys everybody on this front row, all of our love, everybody, including the school system, uh, you're doing really top-notch work. And Miss York has not, she never got a, a, a 1 a.m. call. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but we all, five of us, have worked very, very hard on this budget, trying to come up with the correct numbers uh, and trying to save our taxpayers. Because we have many people that are having real difficulty in paying their bills, mm -hmm. much less their property tax, and trying to hang on to their homes, their cars, whatever. And my vote against this budget was not a vote against the school system. It was against anything above the 43 cents, which I had staked myself out on several meetings ago. Um, and I just, at some point, we've got to help the taxpayers. And that's why I voted against this budget. Again, I highly support 
the school board, the superintendent, who I've known many, many years, I won't tell how long, <laughs> uh, and particularly school children. I have two grandchildren in this public school system. Uh, and by the way, your principal of the year uh, did a super job at Smith Elementary. She took that school from one of the lowest to one of the absolute best. And I see that you moved her to turn time. So uh, just we appreciate what you're doing. Craig Turner, you'll never see her again. <laughs> She's going to work 24 hours a day. I'm so thankful got, for her got, going to turn time. I got a kid at turn time. I'll be up there. All right. Great, <laughs> great parent. You'll be doing a fundraiser. Mr. Super, you need to borrow this gentleman from. <laughs> That's a big suit. Anyway. Uh, we appreciate what you're doing. Appreciate the sincerity and the phone calls and so forth from the school board members. Uh, your chairman probably will never speak to me again. <laughs> other than that. Uh, and I wish she could have been here tonight. Uh, wish her well. Yeah. She's very committed. Snap. Uh, Thank well. you. Uh, I will point out that Miss York is no longer having to drive back to Person County mm -hmm. every school day. Yeah. So uh, the entire county appreciates you particularly and the job that you have done and the dedication. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, it's been said a number of times, but I have to add that comment about, I mean, not just this weekend, but the past several weeks on the months on the budget. I mean, there have been weekend calls mm -hmm. to figure out a, a number, and uh, those calls. I actually came into the office one day earlier, or late last week, and I told the, I think it was Friday, I caught three of the staff members together, and I pointed out to them, I think it was three, I said, and when I send you a text on a, on a Saturday afternoon or a Saturday night, that doesn't mean you've got to answer it before you go to bed on Saturday after that Saturday afternoon or Saturday night. But they have been yeoman at getting the uh, responses we needed to try and look at the numbers we were trying to work on. So, thank you. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Proceed uh, by saying aye. Aye. Uh, it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.local.gov.com govtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.